So this package just arrived. I wonder what it is. Pretty sure you can guess just from the title of this video. But anyway, I'll open it. Are you, are you gonna help me, Sterling? No, oh, no, I'm just here for snacks. It seems a bit big for what I think it is. It seems a bit excessive. Uh, what we got? <laughs> First of all, let's... Uh, Oh, what's this? It's a Fuji film GFX 100S. Oh, what's this? A Fuji Non 100 to 200. What's this? A Fuji Non GF 23 millimeter prime. <laughs> oh, the uh, 1.4 converter. And then what's this one? A 32 to 64. So Fuji reached out uh, from that last video where I was bleating complaining about Sony and offered to lend me this camera with these three lenses. And I said, what, you'll just, you'll just lend it me for like a, a period of time. And they said, yeah, yeah, as long as you promise to send it back. And I said, yeah, yeah, of course I'll give it you back. <laughs> oh, Fuji, how ridiculous. That's mine now. <laughs> oh, I love the smell of Fuji. Right, so I'm gonna go and take this camera for a test drive up Rosewall Creek. And I'm joined today by Amanda's mother, Jenny. Oh, hi, it's really nice to be here, Garvin. Nice to see it's you. It's Gavin. Whatever. It's been two years. Yeah, she, she knows my name, really. <laughs> it's, it's all just a gag, she, she's just pretending. So before I get into uh, talking about this camera, I just wanna say that I have not been paid in any way. And uh, like I said before, Fuji have told me that they expect me to return it, which you know, may or may not happen, we'll see, you know. Um, but also, I wanted to say that I don't have a hate on for Sony, even though I whinge about them all the time. And, and that's much deserved, especially when it comes to the battery life on previous versions of the A7R. But I think that we all have a debt of gratitude to Sony because it was Sony that lit a fire under the ass of all of the other camera manufacturers years ago when they were all doing nothing to innovate. But I am curious to see how other manufacturers have stepped up and also up the ante and have challenged Sony back with better technology and newer features. Although let's be honest, almost all of these cameras use Sony sensors anyway. So really is there that much of a difference? But I think that there might be. And so I'm going to give this camera a chance. It's not a foregone conclusion yet that I will switch to medium format. It's just a little experiment to see what I think. So hopefully I'll find a shot somewhere and we can test this out. Well, after about half an hour of hiking, I was in need of a snack. Oh man, that was quite the hike. We're about halfway in. I think I've earned a little snack. Uh, do you think you should be having that? Yeah, about. Well, like you've put on a couple of pounds since I've last seen you there, Gareth. It's Gavin, it's been two years. I think you know this. Um, but this is gluten free, Amanda made it. It's quite well, delicious. This is like calorie free. Much better. I'll have that. It's the only one though. It's okay. I need it more than you do. You're leaving tomorrow, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Counting the minutes. I feel lighter already. I was really struggling to find a shot, especially with a tough crowd. Well, I don't think I'm going to get a shot. This isn't really working, so I'm probably going to have to move on to a different location. I bet you Adam Gibbs could have got a shot here. You watch his channel, do you? I do. It's quite good. Yeah, I subscribe to him. Yeah? Yeah. You post comments, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I usually tell him how good he is. Uh-huh. I haven't seen you posting comments on my videos. Do you make videos? Bye, Jenny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hope you don't come back. I mean, sorry, it was wonderful to see her. I can't wait to see her again. Yeah. Oh, well, she really likes you, I can tell. Yeah, you can tell? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. tell. It's quite obvious. Yeah. Anyway, let's change location and test this camera out properly. We're going to go to the Canadian Rockies. But before we do that, let's get some crap, disgusting campsite food for our trip mm. to Lake O'Hara first. Go buy some yeah, groceries. Let's do that. All right. Right, we're just shopping for our mountain food and I highly recommend 
samosas. But the secret is to uh, eat them only when you get to the top of your hike because otherwise you'll suffer terrible heartburn. Right, what's next? Cotton candy, so I'll, I'm gonna bring this up. That's not mountain food. I need a tree. Got batteries for my headlamp. And then these, uh, these tuna bowls. And they're kind of good because you can, if they're aluminium anyway, you can squash them down. So they pack out real easy. Spicy chili tunas, and eat that with crackers. Protein bars. Ichiban noodles. Oh, I love a bit of Ichiban. The rest of it, sandwich making kits, oatmeal. Pretty bland, dry stuff for taking up a mountain. And that's about it. What have you got there, look? <laughs> Isobutane for the jet boil and the tarp. We'd rather be dry than wet, right? Right, now that we've stocked up on vile, disgusting <laughs> campsite food, let's go on a little test hike first because I don't want to get all the way up to Lake O'Hara tomorrow and not really know what I'm doing with this camera. So let's go and do a short, I promise, it's a short hike and we'll test this camera out proper today. You always say that. <laughs> We're hiking up a trail near Lake Miniwanka. Yes, it's called Miniwanka. And this little hike, well, Brent told me about this a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, ooh, that'll make a nice shot. So I think maybe we're about 20 minutes from where we need to be, so fingers crossed. The first part of the trail gave us a teasing glimpse of what could be, and then we stumbled upon a historic relic from the old 20th century bankhead coal mine. So we found this derelict old house on the trail and uh, I bet this was someone's dream one day. Have a house on the hill overlooking Lake Miniwanka. I bet if they had a, a clear view, chop some trees down, that probably would be a million dollar view in a spectacular location, but long since seen its best days. I think we should put in an offer and see what they want for it. Hardcastle Towers. Well, yeah, that'll be my last name soon. What? Oh, well. Hardcastle? Is there something, something I don't know? It's on the bard and sparkles. Right, let's get on with the trail. If you go into the woods tonight, be sure to watch out for those abandoned mine shafts. But this is quite interesting. There's several uh, abandoned mine shafts like this one that have been fenced off because obviously if that's covered in snow and you're hiking around here, you're gonna fall down there. So it's kind of a good thing that they've done that. Anyway, we'll stay away from the mines and we'll just crack on and get up this trail. Within about one hour, we finally cleared the dense forest to reveal some dramatic views. Well, we're almost at the spot where I think we need to be. And I can just see the trail going up that gully there. And then I figure I just stand somewhere in all of this scree and that'll probably be where the shot is and as you can see it's snowing very lightly now and it is freezing cold but i'm not feeling it yet because i've got my meat jacket on and that's keeping me warm but i reckon once we get up there and get exposed to the elements a bit more and stop moving be wet as well i'll start getting pretty cold and then it's time to layer up you can just see the top of cascade mountain there and I have tried for years to get a decent shot of that and I've failed every time. But I think what you need to do is get far away and shoot with the telephoto and get some morning light on that, which obviously I'm not gonna get right now. But anyway, let's crack on, get up to that area over there and I think we might find a shot. And I've framed up a telephoto shot that I, I, I'm quite happy with. I, I think it is worthy of being the very first shot on this camera. So I'll just show you the back of the camera and explain what it is that I'm trying to do. So I'll just grossly overexpose this. And basically what you can see here in the bottom of the frame are these peaks, there's four peaks, just like these jagged shark teeth. And then just beyond that, you should be able to see a shadow, a mere shadow of another one just behind it. I'll just make that a little bit darker, you'll see it there. And as the clouds drift in and out, that peak, that re which is the most pointy one, just behind there, starts to reveal itself. And that's what I'm trying to get, it's that perfect moment. And you just see this ridge starting to appear here. 
and it's like, oh, when is the perfect moment to just get that shot? And then, of course, in the top of the frame, well, it just looks like a big wash of grey to you right now, but if I underexpose it, you start to get quite a lot of texture. So it's just waiting, now that I've framed this composition up, for that perfect amount of cloud, which is just basically gentle snow that's drifting in and out, a perfect amount of cloud to make a perfect moody shot. Right, I think my moment has arrived. If this shot works out and it turns out to be any good, here's the shot. I decided to go for a square aspect ratio in the end, just to simplify the composition. And I just love it whenever I can capture a mountain within a mountain. The one thing I kind of like about this camera is there's a little display on the top that's completely independent to the LCD on the back, which gives you a histogram. And if I was a total nerd, the kind of person that would use a histogram, I'd be all over that. The only thing nerdier than using a histogram is using a remote cable release. But let me give you one essential tip that's guaranteed to transform your landscape photography. Now one thing that you're going to want to perfect, especially when you're shooting with a telephoto lens, is the photographer's grimace. Uh, because if, if you don't do that, the image just never works out. I'll give you an example of that. So, and unless you, unless you hold that grimace look, oh, like that, uh, uh, it's just not going to work out and even with the 10 second timer going on you should hold that grimace the whole 10 seconds like uh, uh, there you go perfect every time sounds like you're taking a poo i just did the ever-changing vista over Lake Miniwanka was just begging for a massive panorama, which you'll be seeing lots of very soon. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but way over there, we have a completely different weather pattern to what you see over here, which is just snow. It's almost a complete whiteout from snow. And whenever you get that transition between those two different types of weather hitting one another, that's when you get spectacular light and dynamics sometimes rainbows shafts of light could be lightning that kind of thing the kind of stuff that landscape photographers dream about and it, it's coming and going you know what you see right now is pretty much a whiteout but this has just come and gone all afternoon so that might completely clear so i'm going to sit still and hope that I've, I've framed up a composition that i like and i'm going to hope that the weather pattern moves in to my composition and if it does, I think I might get an absolutely tremendous shot. Hopefully this is a little bit more weatherproof than the Sony, because I'm just going to leave it out here in the snow and tinker with it and see if I can figure out how to record video on this thing, because I can't even find the record button. So that might take me just the amount of time that it's going to take for this cloud to clear and for the weather patterns to shift. We'll see. So what I need is this cool bit of weather that you can see happening over here with that nice light. I need that over, if I just nudge this over to my composition, I need that happening over here. Because you've got this lovely mountain here which is a really interesting shape. You've got the lake and then you've got an opposing mountain there. So this whole ensemble, if you will, is really pretty. I just need that to have that kind of light. So as I'd hoped, and as I hope you can see, that weather pattern has come in. You can see this beautiful, soft, snow-filtered light just hitting that beautiful mountain and all the foothills as well. And that mountain over there has just decided to put in something of an appearance. And then if you combine that with these dramatic clouds here and these kind of different layers of trees, I like how this, this layer in, in front of me is more you know, clear and more obvious. Then just beyond that, you've got this slightly more distant layer, which of course is, you know, combating that snow. So you don't see it quite so clearly. And I love those, those different layers that you see. So this is actually starting to come together now. So I think I might actually get a good shot. What I'll do is I'll just keep sort of riding this shutter and get multiple frames with the light in different positions as the light works its way through the valley so that when I look back at my raw files afterwards, I can pick the one that has the best position. I always like to have that control 
and that ability to decide after which one I like best. And often I will blend uh, moments from, you know, maybe two or three minutes apart where the light is in a slightly different position just to make things absolutely perfect. But yeah, I'll keep riding that shutter and if this shot turns out to be any good, here's the shot. So let me talk you through how I put this together. I shot three horizontal frames without bracketing or focus stacking. I then stitched them together in Photoshop to make this panorama and then added some contrast and color adjustments. And finally, I stretched the panorama to combat the lens distortion and make the peaks appear more like they do in real life from this particular viewpoint. It was very easy and lots of fun to create. Right, well, that is pretty much my window over. So if you look over there, you'll see that the snow has just come back in and closed in and just completely occluded that mountain. But I got my 10 minutes, maybe, maybe even 15 minutes of nice light. I don't think it was absolutely spectacular, but I know I said I wasn't gonna do filler, but you know. Looking at the forecast for Lake O'Hara, we're spending three nights in Lake O'Hara starting from tomorrow. The forecast is forecasting this, what you just saw today. So if we get that kind of light in those pointy peaks, you're gonna see some killer shots. <sighs> Yeah. So we're going to go and get some dinner now and uh, get up at 5 a.m. again no. tomorrow. Yeah. It's all sunrises for the next five weeks. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> like and subscribe. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> so what, what you got there? I see butyrol. <laughs> I saw butane. <laughs> Isobutane. Yeah. Yes. For the jet boil. <laughs> I see butane for the jet boil. <laughs> okay, how do I say it? Isobutane. I it says right there. Hi. Nice to be here. Nice to see you again, Garvin. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> 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 Haven't seen you posting comments on my videos. Do you make videos? <laughs> <laughs> we had a bit of a bit of a sewage mishap. It's not good. It's gonna take some cleaning up. <laughs> oh. 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 This is the worst part of van camping. It, it's terrible. Yeah, this hasn't happened before. Oh. Should we show them the nugget? Yeah, show them the nugget. That's got to be yours. Like, <laughs> I need to get down in that place and clean. How am I going to do that? Or are we going to use this hose and spray it all down? Oh, it's terrible. So sensual. <laughs> I have so much sewage all over me. It's wonderful. Sewage everywhere. Ugh. Yeah, it's nasty. Well, it could have been worse, right? It could have ended up At a least backup. I saw it. At least I caught it in time <laughs> and put it back down the hole. So basically, the sewage started pumping out. We had the thing in the hole, the hose in the hole, but the pressure popped it out. And so it was sewage sprayed everywhere so i had to jump back in and fix it lessons learned in life yes. hold the hold the pipe always hold the pipe always hold the pipe <laughs>